Okay, so hi everyone. <clears throat> this is our fourth, I think, panel, Agile panel, where we will be talking about Agile retrospectives and how to deal them now in this, let's say, difficult times where we are all, all at home, remote, remotely working at that stuff. Uh, we have our Mark here, a uh, great, great speaker and great professional when it comes to Agile retrospectives. He is also an author, author of one cool book, Improving the Retrospectives, so uh, read it, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, well, how we will do this, as, as always, uh, we have your questions already uh, on Match About application, uh, and uh, you can write your questions now as we talk to the Match About application. I hope that you all are in that application. You see we have already some questions here. It's really cool, cool uh, application you can use and then we will go through the questions and answer them as we talk, <coughs> as we talk. Uh, you will also, I will include some polls for you uh, just to see how, how you are thinking, what do you think about Agile Retrospectives, what are your challenges and that, and that stuff. And uh, please participate just to see your opinion. Uh, now I will let Mark introduce, introduce himself. Uh, and then we will start talking about this cool topic. Okay, then welcome and thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Even if you maybe had to move in the, in the past hours, maybe some people are still moving yeah. to their villages and stuff. And um, yeah, my name is Mark Löffler. Maybe some of you uh, know me already. I, um, as Ivan just said, I wrote a book about Agile Retrospective. It's called Improving Agile Retrospectives. And uh, yeah, in the last weeks, one of the main things I did was really uh, finding ways and um, giving people tips how to do retrospectives also in a remote setup, um, what to do here and how does it work. Um, I usually work usually um, mainly as an agile coach and trainer um, with, yeah, you, with companies from, from big corporations to startups, so everything is in. But I prefer working with family-led businesses. That's my, my favorite business because there's where you can change mostly a lot of things because you have also access to the company, bosses and so on. So um, this is where I do my main business usually. And of course, now I'm your virtual agile coach. So I'm helping lots of teams now using online tools like Zoom or doing webinars or uh, coaching people, telephone. Yeah, usually it's, it's Zoom. Telephone is not that happening that often <laughs> um, now that everybody has, has these tools. MS Teams is, is quite famous all, all, overall. And um, yeah, that's that's... The main things about me, I would say. Cool. And you live in a in a Star Wars ship, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm I'm living in a Star Wars environment. I, I moved uh, away from Earth just about five years ago, and um, but as you can see, it didn't uh, went so so nice. So I just shredded my my ship, and now I have to stay here. Cool. It 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 looks kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, let's let's uh, start uh, talking about what actually why we use retrospectives. So why are they important? What is the purpose of the retrospective? Because people have maybe different points of view. So what is the purpose when, when it comes to you? Why you think it's it's important to have them? Yeah. So for me personally, agile retrospectives are the, the cornerstone of successful agile teams or successful agile companies. So whenever I, I meet on a successful agile team, they do successful and create retrospectives. And whenever I meet uh, companies or teams that don't go so well, usually also retrospectives are don't, I'm not really uh, working well. So for me, Agile means it's if you change yourself, your team, your company on purpose. This is what I believe is Agile about. And um, the retrospective meeting is the only dedicated meeting, which is only about how to improve yourself, your team, your company. And that's why I think and believe this is the most important um, um, meeting uh, overall. And... And so the purpose of retrospective for me is just to get better. And it doesn't matter if it's just getting better as a team, if it's get, getting better in using the tools, if it's getting better of uh, having better processes. For me, it's just 
come together, try to find ways how to become better. This is, this is for me the main purpose. And uh, people, I don't know, people usually tend to maybe mix or, or, uh, or uh, confuse, but, but let, let's your opinion regarding retrospectives, review, refinement. <laughs> so how would you, let's say, compare, compare those events that, that people do have when they have like, when they use Agile? Yeah, this, this, I think this usually happens um, uh, for people that are quite new to the method. And so review and retro, they, they often just uh, interchange them. Um, yeah, for me, it's quite easy. The review is just where you invite your customers, um, your users to show your product, what you build and to get their feedback. That's the review. For you review the product. It's quite easy. And retrospective is just for you as a team, how you can become better. And of course, you also think about how, how, does the, um, how went the review, what problems we had during the review, what feedback we got during the review, for example, and incorporate it also into the retrospective. So, um, so this is, the, this is the, the, the difference. And of course, refinement is, is something where you work on your product backlog, on your requirements maybe, um, how to break them down, how maybe to answer open questions and stuff like that. So um, completely different meetings with completely different purpose behind. And uh, if we say maybe for uh, the retrospective, focus on processes, right? Uh, so what are, what are, what are the, those processes? Because I hear that people do tend to see processes, okay, how, how in uh, relationship within the people are, and maybe how we do processes when it comes to software development, how, we do, we do, how, how do we do some code? So what are usually processes that people focus on from your perspective and your experience? I think that, that that really depends on the current situation in the team. For example, if you have a lot of conflicts in the team, then maybe it's better to focus on how to get, how to become a better team itself, how to foster the bonding of the team, how can... Um, we get rid of these conflicts we have. Maybe how can we clear up the expectations of different people? So what do you expect as a person from the team? What can the team expect from you? And there are other situations, maybe you have quality issues currently, then maybe you have a focus of how can we get rid of our quality issues in the product? So what, what do we have to improve? Do we have to introduce more testing, more pair programming, more, even more programming maybe? Do we have a continuous integration server? such things or it's really about um, yeah how to work together with the interfaces to the team for example if you have there are still some companies out there they have a testing department so how can you improve the interface to the testing department how to communicate outside of the team could be a topic so anything that helps you as a team to become better and to help you as a whole company and to become better to deliver the product your customer really wants and where you get paid for, I think this is this is the, the right purpose to do a retrospective. Yeah. Uh, I would like uh, just just to mention uh, to people who came in before before after I said it. So we have some polls prepared that I would like to share with everyone here. So please participate. I would like to share now one poll uh, just to see your opinion when it comes to retrospective. I'm talking to, to, to people that are listening. So I will be launching the, uh, launch the polling now and just let us know your opinion, uh, how useful are your retrospectives. So I will, I'm launching the poll now. I hope that you all see it. So at least I can see it. Yeah. So I will just give you some time so you can think about it and give us your answers and it's anonymous so you can vote nobody will know who voted so if you say it's boring it's fine just click on boring yeah so we won't find out who said it's boring okay four people still missing three Maybe they're just reading the email at the moment and <laughs> yeah, we will talk about that also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emails. Two yeah. people. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I will be ending the polling now and sharing with everyone so you can see the results. Okay. So 
luckily nobody said it's not useful at all and it's boring yeah um, but as um, there are lots of people out there who believe this is boring so there there are these people out there who um, have expression as have this opinion so we have two votes for it's okay but it's usually a formality yeah and um, then we have at least some people that the the, the maximum of seven people pretty useful we end up with some good stuff after that and we have some big fans right very useful yeah. we have great action plans that helps us improve our processes and okay nobody has no retrospective which is good perfect yeah. thank you so that's cool uh, i think that uh, it's it's good that we have the the most uh, answers where you think it's pretty useful uh, i do hear that people I uh, think that um, their retrospectives are a formality. So basically that people just do it because it, it, it is said that it should be done. Or yeah. they talk about some random stuff on their retrospectives, like what to do on, I don't know, team building, uh, how to get more juices to our office. So what, how, how do you think they, uh, they should handle that situation? Whose responsibility is to make it let's say a productive and maybe really get some from, from retros retrospectives. Yeah, I think in, a, in an agile team, of course, the scrum master is one, one who's really responsible, but in the end, the whole team is responsible for, for doing a great retrospective. Um, what I observed in some teams is that it may take some, some three or four times to do it until you find out okay, what you really can talk about and, and do, because sometimes if you do the first or the second retrospective, It feels just like hey, everything is more or less fine. What, what can we change? Um, because maybe in the past they made the experience they are not allowed to change anything or they just got used to that things are like they are. It's just they just take it like it is. Um, so they have problems in, in opening up and thinking about new solutions, about new ways, uh, ways how, to, how you can work. And, and then I think it's, it's really up to the facilitator of the retrospective to find out how can I get them out of their snail house, right? What can I do? What activities can I do? What questions can I maybe ask? How can I really make them more interactive? And um, yeah, and maybe I also observed something too in the last two weeks and then maybe I can bring it up as a topic because um, One main problem of a lot of retrospective is that you always start on a green field. So you just open up for any question, for any, anything you can talk about. I think what I like is if you have a, some kind of a topic. So it was easy in last week. I had some topic was quite easy is, okay, now that we are all home and we have remotely, how does it work? Uh, what that doesn't, doesn't work well? How can we improve our way of working remotely, for example? But then you have a clear topic where you can really work on something. And this helps some teams if they have a clear focus, what we want to talk in a retrospective, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, what will be maybe the good examples, uh, how to prepare for, for, uh, for topics that we will talk about. So do, okay, Scrum Master is the one who is supposed to be, let's say, facilitating that, but do team also have to, what, what, you, what, would, be, what would be your advice for everyone, how to prepare, what to think about before the retrospective, just to make it a good and, and productive atmosphere. Yeah, I think it depends on, on the team maturity and um, on where the team actually is. So if you have an experienced team, maybe it's not that necessary that you come up with a topic by, by yourself as a scrum master, then you can ask the team what is the most important, most pressing topic we have to talk about. Maybe you do a short voting just in the beginning. But if the team is quite new and need maybe some guidance in the beginning, you can just come up yourself with a topic and go into the meeting. And of course, you can maybe ask a question if everybody's okay with doing that, um, just to, to make, have a safe space in the end. But I think both ways are possible. It depends on the team in the end. So Joan just said, um, our user perspective just to complain. Yeah, this is also just sitting together, complain for one hour and then go back to work and nothing changes. This is also maybe not not yeah. the best thing you can do. Yeah. Uh, do you maybe do retrospectives uh, some in, in some interesting places? Like, do you do it in always in the office or maybe you use it, do you do it in park or, or somewhere else? What do you think about that approach? Maybe because of the trust, maybe because of the relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I believe that you shouldn't do the retrospective in the same room every time because even if you switch rooms, you already get some, some other energy and some new ideas sometimes. But um, I also did a retrospective outside. So, um, for example, I had a team very close to Lake Constance in, in, in Germany. And um, this was about maybe 500 meters to get to the, to the shore of Lake Constance. So we just uh, used some benches that were there and just did a retrospective outside. And, um, and then you can also incorporate maybe the environment for having questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe it's a, it's a more stormy day. You could do, use something like that. Or how can we maybe become calm as a sea when it, there's no wind? Or uh, once I did it in the woods, so you could maybe ask, okay, there's a really big tree. So how does it, how, how did he develop these roots to become that strong? So what can we maybe do to become stronger as a team? So we can use these metaphors also from an environment. Um, but honestly, I, I don't do it that often. Usually you're still in the office somewhere, but I think from time to time doing something like that is, is really a cool idea. Yeah, I will be I will be jumping to uh, yeah just to just inform everyone again uh, use use match about application to uh, you all uh, went to it to get the registration link use it to write down questions for us uh, I will now jump to match about to see we have one question that I would like to to uh, focus on so uh, Jovan asks how to involve team on retrospective so we 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 started that topic so maybe I will just uh, add on to that. Uh, how do you uh, involve people, but not like um, force them to do that? But how, how should we approach if there, there is always someone who is against everything? Sure. You know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah, sure. So how, how to involve them, how to approach them so it, they, they understand why we are doing this. <laughs> yeah. So in, in, in my case, usually it's it's... Retrospectives for me are invitation based. So you're invited to participate. If you don't want to be there, then don't come. That's, uh, that's what I usually do. So this is from the open space formats, right? The rule of the two feet. So if you believe um, this is not worthwhile for you, this is not valuable, then uh, feel free to just leave the room. That's, that's okay for me. And I think it's better to that people then leave the room, then they, they are forced to stay. And then we have a strange atmosphere in retrospective. And of course, if you have people that um, don't want to participate for a longer time or not really happy to do that, then you have to go in one-on-ones and talk to them and find out why they believe. Maybe they, they feel it's not a safe place. Maybe they have fear that, that somebody else will just um, track something um, out of retrospective, talk to some managers that whatever Anna said, uh, yeah, this and this happens. And then... They, they have a feeling it's not, not safe. So this is some of the, the main reasons usually that people don't believe this is a safe place and uh, they can't really talk openly. And then there are people who believe we are already so great. Yeah, we are the best team in the world. There's nothing we can change. We can't get any better. But um, then again, if you um, look at great sportsmen, for example, or um, if they would stop training, they would stop becoming better, better and then they will just be get rid from number one in tennis, for example, if they're not working on themselves. Um, so you always have to work on yourself to stay on top. You, you can't stay on top if you're not working on yourself and on your team and on your company all the time. Yeah, and there are always maybe that uh, introverts or people who are not willingly sharing their thoughts and, and that stuff. So maybe I will I will be launching another poll just to see uh, what what you people think. Uh, just to see uh, what makes your retrospective maybe less successful. So there is uh, the ones that we are talking about now, maybe introvert people, lack of trust, and some other things. So I will be launching the polling now, just to see how what makes your retrospective less successful. So I, I shared. So please participate so we can see what is the situation in our environment. So you, can, you can vote for more than one topic? Yeah.
So these are some that I, I just thought could be the reasons, but mm -hmm. if you have some other, please do share on comments or match about or, and let's, let's continue talking about them. <clears throat> and after this, this poll, I will answer the question from you one or the two questions from you one just came in. Yep. I will give you just a couple of more seconds so that everybody can give their opinion. Uh, if you're not using retrospective, just click nothing. I will consider that that you do not use them. At least half of the people voted. Yeah. That, that this gives me a, a great introduction to our uh, my next question. That is how we work now in remote environments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I will be ending polling now. Who voted? Voted. And let's see what is the main reason of less successful retrospective. <laughs> Okay, so we have two winners, right? Yeah, we have not addressing certain or right aspects or needs mm -hmm. and lack of trust within the team. Uh, so uh, I also wanted to, to, we talked about how to build trust, you know. So I, I, I do think it's, it's uh, not so easy. It's, it's a long way to go. But yes, sure. what, what is your advice on that? Um, yeah, I, I had I had this questions maybe four or five weeks ago where somebody approached me and, and asked me, how can I build trust in a remote environment? And, mm -hmm. um, and I told him, oh, if you not already have trust in team before you had to go in a remote environment, it will be getting more difficult to build trust in a remote environment for sure. Um, but of course, there are, there are certainly some, some things you can do. Um, so the I'm, I'm having trouble hearing the expectations of everybody is to just do something like what I what I okay no, it's okay now I think so like now yeah yeah that was just I, I just thought it was not not stable anymore but now it's stable um so what what we did is we we collected expectations from everybody so um everybody just i told them just open word or excel what whatever tool you would like and answer two questions first question is what do you expect from the other people in your team and what can your teammates expect from you and then they just got 10 minutes wrote, writing down the expectations and after 10 minutes, everybody just shared the screen in a round robin uh, fashion. So everybody had had a few minutes of time to share their expectations. And in the back, I was just collecting everything in one document. And so we had all the expectations from the whole team in the end. And then we, uh, we created some clusters at the, at the end, I think we had five or six main clusters, main topics and created more or less the, the, the rules and um, values for the team out of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is this is what we did the first time, and we and now we we did something like okay now with these five clusters, uh, our new um, um, values and, and and rules. So on a scale from one to ten, how close are we already in these areas? And then we picked the one that got uh, the the lowest vote, and then discussed how we can improve in this area. And mm -hmm. this is one activity you can do to build trust in the team, for example. Um, another tool I use quite often is uh, personal maps. And um, you may know about them where you just uh, write your name in the, in the middle of a bubble. And then you have uh, whatever education, work, life, family, hobbies, your goals in life and stuff like that. And you just fill out like a mind map. Mm -hmm. And then you share it with the other people. And you can do it just in a remote world. You can do it on paper and then scan it, or you can just do it in, an, in, an, in a mind mapping tool, for example, XMind, FreeMind, whatever. There are tons of free mind mapping tools out there. And then share your screen. 
And, um, and then it's not you talking about your personal map, then the other people are allowed to ask questions and you answer the questions. Mm -hmm. So you get to know better in a team and you get to know the people also better out of professional life. You also know about their private life. Maybe you didn't know that they have kids. Maybe you didn't know that uh, he's playing or she's playing table tennis and it's also a hobby you have. Maybe you get a connection here, uh, stuff like that. Or there's a really interesting topic and uh, you would like to know more about and then you have a conversation starter for the next coffee break you have somehow like something like that so these are just two examples what you could do to build trust in a team mm -hmm. cool cool uh, and uh, when we talk about uh, tools uh, what tools do you use when it comes to retrospective and uh, or maybe we should ask people first what do they use yeah just just ask people first it would be interesting what they use yeah, so there are a couple of them. Uh, we use two, but let's see. I just uh, wrote some here. So let's see what what uh, techniques do you use? So again, I started uh, polling. So let's see, maybe, maybe you didn't hear uh, about some of these. I didn't use uh, some of them. So if, if there are some that are, that, is, that are interesting to you, we can we can talk more about them. Yeah, I can see that start, stop, continue is it's famous. the most famous one. Yeah. But it's also interesting that some people said other. So maybe just write into the chat window what other techniques you use. Would be interesting. Oh, there is one. Three little pigs. There is one comment. Okay. Yeah. Three little pigs. I didn't know about that. This one sounds interesting. I know three little pigs. I know the story. So, um, uh, maybe we can invite Jovan to share. What is that? I'm just googling the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. fun retrospective. Ah, okay. I just found okay, let, it. Let's see the results. Yeah, so Star Stop continues. Definitely the most famous one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lean coffee and yeah. other. So write us what, what other means so that we can also share it with everyone here so they can maybe Google it, search how it is done. Maybe it's interesting. And what do you use, Mark? Yeah, of course, I, I use a lot of what is what is mentioned here. So I'm um, with completely new teams. I'm I'm also doing either math set clad or start stop continue. I think these are the the ones I use in in teams that uh, are completely new to the whole thing. Um, what I also use quite often, especially when I start with a new team, is a timeline because then usually we look uh, at a at a bigger time frame. And it makes sense to just use a timeline, maybe for the last six months, for example, and then just collecting what happened in the last six months could be could be a cool tool uh, for that. I'm I'm by the way a big fan of the sailboat. I like the sailboat a lot. Can you maybe explain the sailboat? I, I didn't see a lot of results, so maybe share just uh, a quick quick story about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. The, the sail is quite easy. You just draw a sailboat on a, on a whiteboard or the flip chart, doesn't matter. And, and then you collect what are the winds that are bringing you forward. So what are the positive things that are happening? And then you have to also draw an anchor and then you ask okay, what is holding you back. So this is the idea of this. It's just a metaphor you're using. I think it's the same with a speed car um, that uh, it just helps people to think about, okay, what is helping us and what is holding us back? So this is something I, I, I like to do. And um, what I also love to do is I'm, I'm created my own retrospective formats. So I like to do um, metaphor retrospectives. So uh, for example, doing a soccer retrospective. So um, you just look back at your last sprint like it would be a soccer game of 90 minutes. 
and then you're writing a live ticker and uh, you start a retrospective by collecting soccer terms like foul and uh, soccer and trainer and ball and a goal and whatever and um, there's an even famous word in german is blutkrätsche so it's when when the other player really goes hard into the other player it's called i love this word blutkrätsche and uh, you just collect all these words and then um, you start filling these live tickers usually i just uh, have a groups of three or four people in front of flip chart And then say, okay, in minute 12, which maybe means the second day of the sprint, uh, whatever happened. And it, you use these soccer terms then to describe what happened. So you're using a metaphoric uh, language for describing things. And this is so much fun because after this phase, the, the, the teams share, the groups share their, their insights in their live ticker. And everybody know what they meant by whatever uh, a metaphoric language they're using. So lots of laughter and fun. And of course, then the next step is, okay, after the game is before the next game. So what can we do better in our play, play in our how we play soccer? And in the end, you transform the ideas back into the, the normal language. But so you get um, one positive effect is you are, um, it's easier to talk about difficult topics because you can package them in this metaphoric language. And the second thing is you get a lot of interesting new ideas because maybe... <laughs> in the soccer world or something and you say, yeah, I didn't thought about that one. This could be something we could do in a similar way in our working environment, for example. And uh, so this is something I, I do a lot. Cool. I, I haven't tried it, but we'll definitely do that. Just look in my book. There are more of these. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Jovan. Any suggestion on deal with, with uh, dominant or aggressive people in remote retro and, and, and environment? So it's this. Okay, is. just mute your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Easy answer. Um, so um, yeah, with, with, with aggressive people. And so I think what is important when you start working remotely, you should um, create some rules for working remotely for your meetings and stuff like that. So rules can involve things like webcam always on, be there five minutes earlier, um, you only get 60 seconds to talk, then you have to, um, yeah, you, you, well, you can kick them out, yeah. Um, you just have a time box of 60 minutes and then you have to switch to another one who is allowed to talk. Um, so these are, these are things you should define before you start with your retrospectives that all of you know, okay, how this is, these are the rules we have. Or things like, how do you um, say, say I want to, to, to tell something, I want to say something. If you have webcam, maybe you just hold up your hand, I want to say something, or you send something in the chat window, or you have here in the webinar, you have these holding up your hand, for example. So what are the rules, how you determine that you want to speak? So I think this is really important to have something like that. Because then you also have a chance if there's some guy who talks too long to tell him your 60 seconds are over, next, next is on. And if you're the host, you can mute them, for example, if they're not doing it on, the, on their own. But if you have the, these rules, it's much easier than to, to get um, rid of these uh, problems and disturbances. And if you, for example, have introvert people, then maybe it's a good idea to ask the people to prepare for the retrospective, to write something down already in a sheet of paper and do something like a round robin uh, where you just go from top of the list to down of the list and ask everybody about their opinion so everybody has a chance to talk and uh, there's not a chance for somebody else to try to um, yeah, just talk all the time in the retrospective. Yeah, this can also maybe reflect on uh, Neda asked a question on a uh, match about <coughs> any advice on retrospectives in a distributed team given that we are it's always remote especially how to enhance mm -hmm. team engagement. So maybe this can, uh, what you said, can reflect on yeah. that one. Maybe you, is there anything you can add? Just what, what could be a good for if they're always in, in, a, in a remote, let's say, way of working? Yeah, sure. So um, how to keep people engaged in a retrospective is, I think it's, you need to have activities where, where the people can participate. If it's just uh, you discuss on one topic for a long time, so I, I really, um, I think it's really useful to, your, to use online whiteboards, for example, Miro, Mural, uh, whatever other tools are out there, or use special retrospective tools like Retrium or, or stuff like that you can use. So um, 
as soon as you have a, a whiteboard where everybody can collaborate and work together, I think this helps a lot for, for keeping the engagement up, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, again, the round robin principle, where you just um, really go through the people and then they know, okay, I could be next, so they are not maybe allowed to do something different. Uh, another thing could to really explicitly ask at the beginning of your retrospective, please, close all your email software, tabs in the browser, please um, turn off your mobile phone, that you don't have these distractions because you're a lot easier distracted in a remote environment than when you're all in the same room. Um, also turning on the webcam can help a lot because you can see when somebody is distracted and doing some, some different stuff. So this can help. So these are the, the tips and tricks I would have. Um, by the way, I have a little online course of, for, on, on this topic. Um, um, at the moment, it's uh, quite cheap. It, the, the price will be higher this evening, so I can I can share a link and maybe yeah. even a, a code for you guys to get twenty five percent off the price. So if you're interested, this could also be something that cool. could help me. Cool. Uh, what what uh, Boyan asked? What are the common pitfalls in retrospective? Uh, and I will also like to add, uh, okay, pitfalls and how can we say that a retrospective is good? So what is, not the definition of done, but what are the outcomes that we want from one retrospective? So yeah. maybe just to talk a little bit about that. So um, pitfalls, um, first of all, not having any time boxes is a big pitfall because then usually what happens, you don't have enough time in the end for defining any experiments in the end you want like to do. So I think this is one of the biggest uh, pit, pitfalls which can be solved quite easy by just using a timer somewhere. And um, for example, tools like Retrium, they have a timer even that it will you get a nice sound when the time box is over. <laughs> I like it. And um, this is important, I think. Um, another pitfall is that you as a moderator not really are looking that everybody can say something. I think this is really important. Then the buy-in is not really there for the experiments in the end when you have two or three people who didn't have a chance to say something. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end of the retrospective, I want to have some really concrete experiments where it's clear how does it help, who's responsible, when will it be done, and you know the smart formula, right? You will really have smart goals in the end, and not just some wishy-washy uh, thing like, yeah, we want to improve our build processes, and responsible is Ivan. This is just not working, right? You really have to ensure that it's really actionable items in the end that uh, are not too big, and of course, not too many. So you shouldn't have more than two or three is already a maximum from my point of view because you have to work on other things too. Yeah. And, um, and it's also important then to put these action items back into your backlog that it's visible and everybody knows, okay, these are the things we have to work on too. Yeah. Do you, do you people, you uh, have action items? Let me create another poll here. Just to see if uh, when, you, when you finish your retrospective, do you have some action items or to do or change list uh, for, for your next sprint or so I, I'm launching the polling now. There's a doc somewhere. I love. Yeah, yeah. I will mute myself. Sorry. Is it your doc? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. So see, like most people have some, have have uh, perfect. Uh, yeah. Well done. Well done. So basically, everybody, everyone said they have action items. Um, what, what is your opinion? You said that um, you should have maybe two, three action items that you focus on. So you work with a lot of companies. Yeah. Uh, do they have really action items? Do they have to-do list after the retrospectives? And do they reflect on them on the next retrospective? Because I think it's, it is really important to see, okay, yeah. we, we <clears throat> do this. And then should, do, do we say, yeah, we did this? Because that is yeah. what also happens. Like, so I, I would say in the retrospective I facilitate, we do it. And I think it's really important. So when you start with a retrospective, right after the setting the stage and doing an icebreaker, maybe it's really important to just review 
your action items from, from last time. And what is important for me, when I define action items, I call them experiments, um, I also define a hypothesis. So you need a hypothesis too. So just simple example, maybe Ivan is always late for the daily in the morning. Daily is at nine o'clock. So experiment could be, let's move the daily to 10 o'clock. And we have a hypothesis. Hypothesis is easy in this case. Ivan will participate in the daily. So next time we do retrospective, we just review our experiments and we look at, okay, so did we shift the meeting to 10 o'clock? Yeah, we did. Did it help? So did the hypothesis really come true? And we find out, no, Ivan is still not in the daily. So maybe the, the, the time is not the problem. And then it's important to roll back what you did. Because one of the problems I see often is that you define experiments, you find a new rule, didn't help you, but it will just stay. And then you get lots of things that doesn't help you and um, didn't help you in the past. And then just piling up and nobody really knows what, 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 is, what is going on. So for me, it's really important. Review your action items. Did they really help? If they didn't help, roll them back and just try something, something new. And I will just share the link to the, to the online course with the coupon code. Yeah. You can use. Uh, Johan asked the uh, action items for a particular member or whole team. So what do you advise? Or, or it was a question, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, yeah, so the, the, the thing is, um, so in German, there's a, there's, a, there's a saying, a team means toll ein anderer macht's. So yeah, for, the, yeah. for the name, T-E-A-M. So, um, which means um, create somebody else will do it, is the translation. So yeah. if you just say, if we as a team have to do something about it, doesn't work. You always need some, somebody who's responsible. Of course, maybe it's the whole team who has to do something but there has to be someone who is responsible to just make sure it will happen. Yeah. Do you maybe have some interesting uh, story for, for your retrospective, something to share when some awesome example or some interesting example, how, how it went from, from the teams you work with? Yeah, sure. So um, what we tried out in one of our retrospective was something called a work retrospective, which means you just blocked away the maybe the 90 minutes for the retrospective. And instead of discussing what can be improved, you just do a, a five minutes pitch for maybe a topic everybody knows we have to work on. So everybody has a chance of thinking about such a topic. Um, for example, uh, the database was becoming uh, really slow. Um, I, I wanted to look into this for a long time, but didn't have time. So you pitch this idea and whoever wants to help and, and join you, he can just join. And then you use the 90 minutes to dig into this problem, to solve this problem. So you're doing work in the retrospective instead of discussing what could be done afterwards. And in this example I just have, this is an example I had from Eve, a friend of mine. They really looked into the, the SQL statements and found out, okay, there's a big issue here. They already solved about two thirds of, of the problematic SQL statements and just decided we will solve the rest too. And in the end, the system was a lot more performant. And uh, so this is just one of my, my, my uh, hmm. examples I would like to share, for example. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Fun Retro uh, as a tool. Do you maybe have some others, Maya asked on Matchabout, uh, which tools accept Fun Retro to use? So what the, what we, are we talking about um, tools to do online retrospectives? Is this a question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, actually, I think there is, let me, let me just have a look. I think I did a, an, uh, an article on this topic just a few months ago. And also Jovana uh, asked a similar question, but for large retrospectives. So for a scale of agile, more, more than 100 people. <laughs> so retrospective for more than 100 people, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. When you do retrospective for more than 100 people, then of course you can't do them in 90 minutes. It's, this is maybe the first thing you, you have to keep in mind. Yeah. And uh, all those next things, you, you can't do them uh, with just one facilitator. So you then need more than one facilitator. This is, I think, also quite, quite um, uh, important. And um, no, this, was a, this was a German post. So I would just post something in here. So, um, yeah, I, I did a big retrospectives, but then it was really about uh, um, a big room, all the people in there. 
I think what is what really works well in this environment is using a timeline, for example, that you have a big wall. You can use the big wall to to pin stuff there. Then you can do stuff like a gallery walk um, on these uh, wall because you can't talk of, on on uh, about every sticky that is on the wall. You don't have the time for that. But people can do a gallery walk, and then you can also invite people to cluster topics on this wall. And then again, uh, having groups talking about these clusters again and sharing their insights. So mm -hmm. works works well, but then you need more than one facilitator in my, my um, yeah. Thing. So I would just um, uh, share maybe some some tools. So um, tools that that work on retrospective, I will just make them here into the. So one tool is uh, Nitro. Then there's a tool which is called Retrium. Um, yeah, uh, Mark, you're you're just uh, writing it to me, so that's why people. No, see, it's, but it's, I, I, I think that it says it's to everybody, but... No, no, there is all panelists and all panelists and attendees. Ah, okay. Yeah. Let's change this. So. Yeah, but I will, so, be, I will be sharing also the, your link to, to what we talked about, your online... Yeah, I can just talk to... I just paste them again. So it's... Yeah. Um, I think this is, the, this is the code, yeah, and... Yeah, uh, we will be also posting this on, on Match About... So if if you guys do not catch this in our chat box, you will have everything there. Yeah. So just, I would just I, I now now it's in the right window, right? Now everybody yeah. gets the yeah. So the first one is the coupon con, the second one is the link to the to the online course. Okay. So about tools. Um so there's Nitro, for example. There is uh, Retrium. There is Scrum L and R, I think, or L R. Let's let's have a look. Scrum L R. It's only Scrum L R. Dot I O is one tool. Of course, you can use the, just the standard tools for where you can use your online whiteboard as Miro, Mural. So this is just just a little list of of things you can use for for retrospectives. So the first three are really uh, made for retrospective. And the uh, Scrum LR is, is, I think, is, is also for free. You can do a lot of free. Retrium, mm -hmm. you can have an account. I think this first 30 days are free, and then you have to pay per team. Uh, Nitro, you can also have a uh, 30 day free account, then you have to pay for that. And um, yeah, this is just a tiny list of what you can do. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, do should Should people do maybe? Uh, reviewing team metrics on retrospective, so maybe looking at the cycle time, uh, VIP, maybe also thinking about uh, how the tasks have been defined, are they clear enough? So is that a good place to, to, to talk about? Yeah, sure. I, th I think maybe you don't have to wait for the retrospective to talk about these things. So I think great teams are already talking about these topics when they are problematic during the sprint, for example. But um, I think there's, there, there's nothing speaks again, talking about maybe a bad a cycle time you have at the moment and how you could solve that. I think it's a perfect place to do this in retrospectives, for example. So I think, yeah, yeah it's, it's perfectly fine to do it in retrospective. Yeah, but I also asked when it comes to, because you mentioned not, not to wait until the retrospective. So she asked uh, if some impediments occur during the sprint, uh, how to remove them until retrospective. So yeah, just. Yeah, I think if, if there are really some big impediments that are happening during the sprint and you can't wait, then of course you should uh, work on these items. Yeah, Maybe a scrum master can help and maybe you have to talk to your product owner because of really pressing issues, you have to solve them. And maybe you even have to stop your sprint. That can happen too. It doesn't happen that often, but this is also an option you can you can choose. Um, yeah. if, if you feel this is so pressing and so important, we have to solve something. Um, for example, if you have a product product uh, product uh, production issue, you can't wait for two weeks until you solve such 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 things. You have to do something about it, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, also, we have one. I'm I'm just looking at the questions that match about just to see if we. We answered all of all of the people's questions. Uh, so uh, there is also one uh, how to um, how, how to uh, focus on that thing that people are describing the issue and the retrospectives and not actually focusing on 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 how to solve the problem. So we can comment. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that there are different phases. If you if you are working in a retrospective, I think first step is to collect all the, the, the things you want to talk about. And there is also allowed to talk about positive things. And it's also allowed to think about how you can e even make it better than what is already good. So this is also fine. But then you, of course, you have to select maybe two or three topics you would like to discuss any further. And then it's important to do some root cause analysis, which is called general insights in the retrospective language. So really dig deeper, what is the real root cause? And then after you, you identify some of the root causes, you can then go to the next step of defining experiments. So I think it helps a lot if you use this, um, these phases in a retrospective to get some real agenda and of course put some time boxes on these phases and it helps to really focus on the, on the main topic you have at the moment. Should we have an agenda on retrospectives? Yes, yeah, sure. Yep. Especially in a remote setup, I think it's even more important to have an agenda. Yeah. And when it comes to, we talked about uh, introverted people, people who are maybe hardly expressing themselves. So how to, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm just thinking maybe if they have also an agenda, so they have to follow everything, do, 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 does it make a more uncomfortable situation for them to speak up or you, we should put in an agenda, like, let's say, I don't know, giving feedback or what everybody thought went well, what could be better or just... Yeah, I think that's, that's what I said earlier. I think when a good moderator or facilitator is really looking at all the people in the team and if he really sees, okay, there's one or two people who do, didn't speak up yet, I think, um, he, the, I think the worst thing that you can do is, Ivan, you didn't say something in the last 60 minutes. Do you want to share something? Then even like, <gasps> no, I don't want. Uh, but if you just use something like a simple round robin principle, everybody has to say something. You just know, okay, I will be on in, 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 in whatever, in two minutes and I have to share my story so they can prepare themselves to speak up. I think this is important. Or like I said earlier, prepare something maybe in, in advance on an on a online document that you shared in a, in a retrospective. Yeah, that comes to the, I, I uh, just remembered I have one more pool when it comes to uh, facilitation of, yeah. of a retrospective and remotely. So uh, let's see how hard is facilitation of a retrospective now. So if you are, if you are scrum masters and you facilitate, answer uh, how you feel. And if you are not, if you are a part of retrospective in some other role, please do share your opinion, how hard it, it is for, for the uh, person who, who facilitates that. So I, I just put a number from one to 10, one meaning it's easy and 10 mean, meaning it's really, really hard for them to do it remotely. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you use uh, one to five or one to 10. What do you prefer? I, I, yeah, I believe I, I prefer one to 10. I think this yeah, is this yeah. is the more common approach. Yeah. Okay, so it's really it's really uh, we have basically all the numbers here, not one, two, and ten. So somewhere in in between. Yeah, but probably uh, for those who who already are working remotely, working with distributed teams, it's easier because you already know how to do this uh, when it comes to teams that, that are not familiar with how to work remotely. Uh, what is more hard here, one or 10? Uh, okay, hard is 10. So it, when, if, you, if you select 10, it means that it's really, really hard. It's Milan. really, really hard. Uh, really. Yeah, so I will be sharing the results now. So you can see it's really, it's even. <laughs> it's even, yeah. But it's more hard than than not hard. Yeah, yeah. It's more hard than not. Yeah, and it, and it, it's uh, doing stuff remotely is more difficult. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you do retrospectives. It doesn't matter if you do sprint plannings or or, or dailies and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's more hard, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't know if uh, there are some more questions. Let me check. Uh, we, we attended this for one hour, so we are on time now, but let's see. I will check if there are some more questions here in match about, um, <clears throat> I think we answered them all. If someone's answer hasn't been 
because someone's question hasn't been answered, please speak up here in the chat. Uh, I don't know if Mark, um, do you want to add something? Maybe we didn't men talk about something that you think it's really important for people who do retrospectives. I think there are tons of, of things that, that you can talk about retrospectives. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe we missed something. For me, it's just maybe one final sentence that is really important for me is, it doesn't matter if you just sit together with your team drinking a glass of wine and just discuss about life. This is also could also be a great retrospective or if you really do some hard talk about your quality issues in production. In the end, everything that helps you as a team to grow and to become better is for me a perfect cause for doing retrospectives. Of course, you shouldn't maybe drink wine every, every time, but... Um, for me, it's, it's totally okay. If it helps you to grow as a team, to uh, have a better bonding in a team, um, that's also f totally okay to do it like that. Yeah, and uh, should we drink uh, wine in the middle of the sprint? Because Jovan asked, should we do retro <laughs> in the middle of the sprint? Yeah, of course you can do retro. I think nothing speaks again uh, doing uh, in the middle of the sprint, but usually there should be a real cause for that and you shouldn't maybe do it because then people may ask, why are we doing a retro in the middle of the sprint and at the end of the sprint and again? So um, I like it more when it's really the whole sprint is finished, we have the re had the review and then you can review or between retrospective of the whole thing and then I think this is my my preferred approach what is i think you can do a retro whenever you like this is, there's no rule that you're not allowed to do that cool uh i would like to uh invite you all to to read mark's book uh improving a <coughs> uh and also i will i would invite you to join his uh online training i will be sharing he he uh uh, uh told you that he will be sharing uh, some code for his training so join match about uh we asked i think we answered all the questions there join match about we will be talking about retrospectives also there we will see if there are some unanswered questions so feel free to an, uh, ask questions also in match about on this topic on some other topic that we will be talking about and we will be more than happy to answer it uh so uh, we have just one more uh, question, uh, and just before we finish, finish, do you prefer to do retrospective with more than one team and reflect on work processes and organization after some features completed? Uh, so we, yeah, let's let's call this one the, the final question, and then we will. Yeah, I think it's a it's a good idea if you, for example, were working on a product with more than one team to do a retrospective, uh, an over retrospective with, with everybody. This, I think it's, it's important to do it like that. What I did in the past, what that uh, did was that we had retrospective every quarter of a year with the whole thing, 100 people in one room, like it just explained. And of course we had the retrospectives on team level after every sprint. So this is something we did. So I think it's, it's important that you also talk about interfaces between the team and do a retro on this topic. Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so join Match About. We will be sharing also the list of tools uh, that we talked about, the list of tools for retrospectives, the list of techniques that you can use, maybe try for your retrospective, see how it goes, uh, sharing the links that Mark mentioned and the code. And I would like to really thank you, Mark, for, for this talk. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it was uh, really awesome. I enjoyed it. I hope that also people here enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope that we will have an opportunity to talk uh, again about this on, or some other topic. Or uh, it, it was really nice for me to to talk to you. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a blast. So um, yeah, maybe hope to see you on my on my online course. So um, if not, maybe on a, on a, on one of the next conferences in Serbia. You know, never know. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you, and I wish you all uh, happy holidays. Enjoy tomorrow, relax on work day. Uh, so see you, see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye everybody.